In Select the Blocks folder, open a variable table. To learn how to create a variable table, watch the video Create and Monitor a Variable Table. In the Variable Tables, select the Variable menu. Select Display Force Values. If any I.O. was highlighted in the Variable Table, they will automatically be copied into the Force Table, such as Input 8.0. Let's add input 8.1, add output 8.5. In this system, input 8.0 is normally true. Let's enter the force value false. You can input the number 0 or type the word false. Input 8.1 is a push button that is false unless pressed. Let's force it to be true. You can type in the number 1 or the word true. Output 8.5 causes a conveyor to move to the right. Let's force this output to be true. Select the Variable Table menu and choose Force. You'll get a caution message telling you that closing the Force table does not stop the force. Be careful when forcing I.O. The Force table gets downloaded in the PLC and will continue forcing I.O. whether a computer with Somatic Manager is connected or not. If the CPU is placed in stop mode or even power down, forcing will resume on power up and run mode unless the CPU's memory has been deleted. Click Yes to continue. The I.O. points are now forced to the value we set. The variable table shows that a force is taking place with the yellow FRCE label at the bottom of the window. The force light on the front of the PLC is also illuminated. Minimize the force table. FC16 contains some of these I.O. points. Let's open the block. Turn the monitoring glasses on. Output 8.5 and input 8.0 have both been forced, but there's no indication in the programming editor. Let's fix that. Turn monitoring off. Select the Options menu and choose Customize. The checkbox Address Identification is not checked by default. Placing the check in the box will cause the programming editor to notify you if forcing is taking place. Make sure the box Permanently Forced Addresses is checked. By default, addresses that are not fail-safe will display in red. Click OK. Turn monitoring on again. If address identification is turned on for the first time and the block was opened, the force identification may not display until the block is refreshed. One easy way to do this is to close the block and reopen it. Let's turn monitoring back off. Close function 16 and reopen it. Turn monitoring on. Now you can see a red F next to output 8.5 and input 8.0. In network 1, the logic is not satisfied, so the conveyor coil shows false. However, we forced that output to be true, and in the real world, the conveyor is running right now. That's because output values are sent to the module after the code executes. In Network 3, input 8.0 is false, which was the value we forced it to be. That's because inputs are read in at the top of the scan before the code executes. The red F is an indication that you should look at the I.O. points in a variable table to see what the force table is telling them to do. Minimize the programming editor. Bring up the minimized variable table and force table again. To add another force, Type the I.O. points such as output 8.1. In the force value column, let's force the output to be true. As an alternative to going to the variable menu, you can also right click on the I.O. and choose force. You'll see the forcing caution again. Click yes if you want to continue. You'll see another message telling you there's already an active force job in the CPU. Click yes if you want to continue. Output 8.1 has now been added to the force table. If we wanted to remove a force, for instance input 8.1, highlight the row, select the variable menu, and choose Stop Forcing. Click Yes to the caution message if you want to stop the forcing. Notice though all the forcing was stopped, even though only one row was highlighted. Here is a critical note. When you choose Stop Forcing, all forces are stopped. We will select the variable menu and force the variables again. Click Yes to start the forcing. To stop forcing on one or more variables but not all variables, 
click in the force value column of the variables that you want to stop forcing. The icon with the two forward slashes and lightning bolt comments out the force value. Alternatively, you can just delete the force value if you like. Now go to the variable menu and reforce the table. Note carefully that you are not choosing stop forcing, but you are choosing force. Click yes to the caution message. Now the forcing has been stopped on only this one variable. In this video, you have seen how to force I.O., turn on address identification in the programming editor, add a single force to an existing table, stop the forcing on one or more variables while leaving other forces active, and that concludes this video.